Hey everybody, John Malanka here with United Patients Group. We just finished another podcast with the Dr. Charles Benz out of Sarasota, Florida. And Dr. Benz specializes in not only, uh, he's well-rounded, but bringing the body back to balance, but detecting a lot of these tests that he has are being able to detect and treat, and in many cases, prevent a lot of the ailments that we're seeing out there. Diabetes, and in many cases, cancer. Uh, talking, we talked about um, uh, age-related uh, ailments such as Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, and what he's doing. Uh, he also has a test, blood work test that I'm going to take, uh, and I'll share my results uh, at, a, at another, another, uh, at another podcast we'll do. And so I'm excited to share that with you, and excited to share Dr. Benz with you and his knowledge. So hope you enjoy it. Hit, hit the like button if you do write your comments as well as share. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to our, to our channel. Uh, it helps us and it helps you getting this information out. Wishing you health and wellness. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Enjoy. Hey everybody, John Malanka, United Patients Group. Be informed and be well. And today's guest is Dr. Charles Benz. Hey, doctor, how are you? I'm good, John. How are you today? Doing well. We've had, I think we've been talking almost for a full year before we were getting you on the show here. I mean, so yeah. we were going to meet in Texas uh, at another conference, an integrative oncology conference, and then it was just too difficult for traveling due to yeah. COVID. And then... Uh, and then the conference was, was shut down and it unfortunately went back online and we had already had the guests. And I thought, gosh, that would have been a perfect thing for you anyway, but happy to have you on here. Um, there's a lot to share and, and you're such a well-rounded individual. That's why I wanted to get you on here. So let me read your, your uh, in bio. So Dr. Charles Benz is an internationally recognized author, speaker, and consultant specializing in the fields of organizational improvement and work place wellness. I want to hear about that. His creative publications and presentations have garnished uh, garnered praise in the form of Man of the Year recognition in the United States and Canada. Uh, co uh, commendation from the President of the United States. Way, way to go. And, and speaking engagements worldwide, including United Nations Habitat Conference in Istanbul, Turkey. He is one of the top rated speakers for Vistage. Is that correct? Vistage? Yeah. Yeah. Vistage, which is the largest CEO organization in the United States or in the world, I should say. Dr. Benz has written nine books and over 200 articles, which I've read quite a few, though not all 200, and many of which have been translated into other languages. He's written for uh, three university courses and has been named the Vail Visiting Perse Professor, excuse me, by the Ottawa Regional Cancer Foundation. He has a small wellness company, Healthy at Work, in Sarasota, Florida. And married for 38 years. I'm going to throw that in there because I'm a big, big fan of that. So uh, you've done a lot. I appreciate you coming on. Um, and when I say you've done a lot and you're well-rounded, I mean, you've done everything, not only being an author, but you're a lecturer, presenter, um, but you're into nutrition. And so you start um, from the inside out. Is that is that correct? I mean, I like, I like looking at nutrition. On the outside, everyone's like, great, but you know, sometimes blood tests show, we can talk about different blood tests that you offer as well. But I think just bringing the, the body back to balance and finding what's on the inside, because a lot of times on the outside, we look healthy. On the inside, something else. Like, uh, I, you know, I saw with my wife, which I've shared with you on, on numerous conversations. So uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. And yeah, I think you're right. I think most of the people that get into this business, especially those later in life, like myself, they end up with a health challenge. And uh, so that usually spurs them on to uh, try to find out what's going on. And in my case, it was a urinary tract problem that the doctors wanted to operate on. I just said, you know, I'm not really happy about having an operation without doing a little more research. And so I was giving a talk to a chamber of commerce uh, conference, a national conference, I was a guest speaker, a keynote speaker. And I went into a health food store there and there was a little booklet, uh, $4.95, uh, how to treat urinary tract and prostate problems naturally. <laughs> and that little book for $4.95 changed my life because it basically said, don't eat alcohol, don't, don't drink alcohol, don't eat red meat, uh, keep the sweets away, keep the spicy foods away. And, you know, I'd had some very bad symptoms. And so I started to do what this book said. And within two or three months, all the symptoms went away. And I thought, 
what the heck just happened? You know, they wanted to operate on me. Yeah. And so I thought, I think there's something to this. And I started to do more research over about 15 years. Um, and then one day I looked at my library and my library, which used to be all organization development stuff, because that I was a con organization development consultant with international practice. And all of a sudden, 90% of my books in my library were about health and nutrition. And I thought, where in the heck did my other books go? They were all in the garage, in, book, in boxes. Because over that 10 or 15 years, I had actually transformed all my reading into the, this other area. And I said, hey, um, maybe I'm doing the wrong thing. Maybe I should do something around nutrition. So at that time, I had gotten my master's. I started my master's when I was 50. But I was 60 when this sort of revelation happened. And I said, well, maybe I should go get a PhD. And so at 60, I went and got a PhD in nutrition. And that kind of pushed me over the edge. That's when I finally said, you know what? I think I have to change my business. Awesome. So in the late 1990s and early 2000s, I changed my business to be healthy at work. I, I wrote a little book called Health in Your Pocket. And I started to do workplace wellness programs. So that was the impetus. And so I, I really was uh, really totally healed from the prostate and urinary problems that I had. And this had been done just by this little $4.95 book. And I thought, if that can happen from that, um, maybe there's a lot more I could do here. So that was kind of the beginning point. It, it's, uh, I have this book that uh, I always keep on my desk and I've shared it before, but it's the same type of thing. This little book has helped a lot of people. And I don't know if, you know, if, if you've seen it, but it definitely helped uh, Crit and I when we were going through this it's called Louise Hay, Hay House Productions, um, Heal Your Body. And it's like, a, what, about a quarter inch thick, but yeah. thick, but it's amazing on how something this tiny is so powerful. And I'm glad that you're, you're back to health as well. Um, so you started a whole new, and, and I applaud you on that because I always tell people it's never too late. It's never too late uh, to, 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 to start. And how many times have we, done, have we done things in life or didn't do things in life and go, gosh, if I would have done this three years ago, I would have been done by now. You know, I watch yeah. too late and I don't want to go back to school. I don't want to yeah. do this. And, yeah. you know, now you're sitting here going, shoot, I, sh I should have done that. So well, my, my, my wife said something very, very profound. At one point, one of the relatives in our family said something about uh, she wishes she had gone to university. Uh, and, and here to your story about coming too late, my wife said to me, not, not in the earshot of this other person, well, yeah. I, I hear they didn't close the universities. <laughs> you, hear, you heard what, sorry? She said, I, I, as far as I know, they didn't close the university. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I thought, well, isn't that a telling thing? And so you know, they are, I was an example of that. And one of these, this other person was a very close relative yeah. of mine. And so, you know, I was a living embodiment of this ability to, to change and do something different later in life. So, um, and, and, and then I not only got on to my own health and I started to get on to the health of all these employees that I started to consult. And then one by one, I started to encounter more people who were having cancer. And then that's when I started to get the, the bug. And about 10 years ago in 2010, I did a conference on breast cancer and uh, international. I mean, the people came from all over the country. And I had a colleague of mine work with me on this. And so that was a 10 year journey that started me uh, just continuously learning as much as I could about cancer because more and more of my friends and relatives were following the cancer. And so every time that happened, it just made me more angry that I hadn't learned enough or that um, they weren't willing to do what I was recommending or what the doctors yeah. that I worked with were recommending because they're so stuck on what the doctor of their choice is going to say because they're so scared. So anyway, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's a challenge to get somebody to change their thinking about what can be done. And, and right now that's one of the biggest challenges. I, 
we have a lot of things that can be done for almost all these cancers. Mm -hmm. The biggest challenge is people in is in their people in people's heads. It, it is, and I think um, you you nailed it on the head when you said scared. When you're scared, and you have that diagnosis of you have cancer, your world just comes to a halt. You're you're rock. You're researching. <clears throat> Nowadays we have the internet, which is good and bad. But you want to research everything, and then everybody and your mother is coming at you, throwing things at you. Here, try this, try this, try this. I heard this, I heard this, I heard this. And we had it even when we were going through this. And so I talk with, uh, you know, this is, you know, uh, uh, I speak with patients on a daily basis and their family members of, you know, help. I have cancer. What can we do? What, what, what do you know? And there's a lot of times I route them away from cannabis. There's a lot of times I route them to the integrative oncology world and functional medicine world, as well as even the conventional world, um, you know, doesn't discriminate. And I always say with people, you know, go with, go with your heart and have this communication with your family and go with it, go with it. And if that's what your belief is, go with it. Cause a lot of people come to us and say, I'm going to try this. And if this does not work, then I'll try cannabis or then I'll try an integrative approach. And so it's tough because like my father-in-law, he was given two weeks to live. We didn't know the benefits of cannabis, the medical benefits. We just looked at it for appetite stimulation because we found a study that showed 40% of cancer patients passed before of malnutrition before cancer. And we were fortunate. I mean, it was the blind leading the blind, trial and error, and we had no error. And uh, uh, people say it's a miracle, God, luck, I don't know. Um, let me go back to workplace wellness because I think that's a, a, a great way to start. And, and what did you do there? Workplace wellness of stand-up desk. I'm a big fan of stand-up desks. Um, I, I, I shared with you before we, we got on the screen, but our doctors, our naturopaths. And I remember I did a blood test when we first launched United Patients Group in 2011. I mean, I was constantly, and, and, I, and I work, I've, I've been in health and wellness my whole life, but this time I was, we were just spending 18 hours in front of the computer a day. And I think I gained 15, 20 pounds. And I did my blood test and my doctor says, John, I can tell the oxygen in your blood, you're only using half capacity of love that your lungs and you're, you're sitting at your desk too long. And I said, you got that from a blood test. So after that, went out and got a stand up desk. I stood up, my back felt better. My hips felt better. And I got back into my workout routine. And so is that part of your workplace wellness that you promote? Sure. We, we do, uh, we do assessments of the workplace uh, environment to make uh -huh. sure people are, are sitting in the right place and have the right ergonomics and all the rest of it. But mostly what I'm doing is preventing and reversing chronic illness. So um, the, the, the big challenge here is to find these illnesses soon enough because once you go down the rabbit hole of a disease, you're stuck in the conventional medicine uh, trap of uh, these are the codes, these are the things that insurance will pay for. And, and so if you can find disease sooner, this is the thing that, that, I, that I learned over the last 20 years. The sooner you find a chronic illness, the sooner you have a chance to get somebody to pay attention to improving their health, especially if the test is kind of a straight line projection. Like if you keep doing what you're doing, you are going to get cancer or you're going to get diabetes. And we have an artificial intelligence platform right now that does that. It actually tracks 5,000 enzymes and 5,000 other biomarkers and actually can tell you what the probability is that you will have a disease within five to 10 years. And it tells you exactly what diseases you will likely have. That's, that, that's good and scary at the same time. Well, sure. People say, well, I don't really know, want to know that. And, I, yeah. and then the next thing that I ask them is, would you want to know it if you had a 98% chance of preventing it? And then they go, oh, yeah, okay, I, 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 I didn't really realize that. So that's the whole idea. The yeah. platform will give you an assessment of where you are now. It gives you an assessment of where you are five or 10 years from now. And it says, this is what you should do right now. This is the top five things. <clears throat> and then if you want to go deeper, here's the next 10 things you should do. And so we have gotten such remarkable 
I mean, the, the, the group of 10,000 people that first got tested on this artificial intelligence platform, over a five year period, those companies were able to reduce their healthcare costs by 12 to 15% every year, five years in a row. Now that's a pretty big adjustment in yeah. the cost of healthcare. So this is dramatic stuff. This is very, very significant. All they had to do is eat some more vegetables and stop eating so much sugar and red meat and dairy. And all of a sudden miracles started to happen. We weren't even loading on the supplements yet. We weren't even doing the therapeutic things that we know how to do in order to reverse disease. We were just getting them to eat better and they were getting miraculous results. It, it, you're, you're speaking my language because, you know, as I mentioned, and I've talked about this in, in numerous shows about, you know, I'm a fan of MDs, but I'm a fan of naturopaths because of their blood tests. Um, they do A through double Z. Not saying that doctors don't, MDs don't do that, but naturopaths do A through double Z, where uh, MD would generally do, in most cases, uh, A through Z. And, you know, we've, uh, you know, that was something Corinne and I always did, you know, and I think when she hit 50, you know, she was having anxiety and, and, and sleep issues. She's like, what's going on? I've, I've never had anxiety. I've never had, you know, stress or sleep issues. So she went and did a blood test and it showed that her hormones were all, all out of whack. And I said, God, I want to do that and see where I am. And it showed you where your cholesterol is. It shows you where your liver, liver levels are, you're pre-diabetic, et cetera. And this, you know, after a few years of us doing this, our doctors, you know, knew where our bodies were. And, um, and I, and I've already shared with you, I'm sharing with our, with our group here, but, uh, it showed that my liver was max pre-diabetic, you know, she said, God, you guys are a star patient, star pupil. What's going on? And I said, I'm working out, staying on top of my health, et cetera. And then I said, acupuncture. And she said, are you taking Chinese herbs? I said, yes. And so she did a finger prick test and I came back and my body was loaded with metals. And if I didn't have that test, this is where, I, where I'm getting with the benefits of these tests, I would continue on taking my Chinese herbs, nothing wrong with Chinese herbs. You know, I grew up over in Asia, and so I'm open to Eastern, Western, alternative, conventional, all type of medicine. But uh, seeing that, that my liver was maxing, what would happen if I continued on for four more years? My liver would have failed. You know, I'm not even a drinker, um, you know, a glass of wine here and there, but um, so I did ozone for, uh, once a week for six weeks and everything went back to normal. And so I am a fan of tests. And so, um, can you talk about more of these tests because, you know, I'm into keeping the immune system strong as well as brain function strong, as well as, you know, prevention. And if we can do prevention, I'm, you know, prevention to me is getting out and working out and, and, and putting right foods and supplements and, we can talk about, I know you're big into vitamin D, which I am as well, and other supplements. So if we can lead into that as well, that would be great. But can you talk more about these tests and who would benefit from this? Is it uh, everyone? Well, yeah, everyone would, would benefit because right now, uh, 95 to 100% of people have a bad diet. This, is, this was a study done by the National Cancer Institute uh, 10 years ago. And they, they surveyed over 16,000 people aged two to 80, and they couldn't find one person with a healthy diet. And so, and in fact- what, 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 what is a healthy diet? Well, in this case, they had 14 different categories and people were deficient in 11 out of 14 categories. And so mainly they were eating too much meat and sugar and salt and simple carbohydrates. So all they needed to do was really increase their vegetable intake and their fiber intake and, and eat more fruits and nuts and seeds and healthy fats. And uh, so that's, that's it in a nutshell, it's the Mediterranean diet. Yeah. Now we know that the Mediterranean diet can be even healthier. Now we got a new Mediterranean diet called the green Mediterranean, Mediterranean diet. And what that does is eliminates all meat and increases the amount of vegetables that people eat and the amount of fiber that they eat. So, you know, this whole uh, RDA, and the whole USDA thing where you have, where they say they have to eat four to five helpings of fruits and vegetables, that's just not adequate. That's just not sufficient. We know that if, if a person wants to have optimal health, they need to eat somewhere between seven and nine helpings of fruits and vegetables a day. The average person is not willing to do that. I mean, I'm one of the only people that I know that eats three vegetables for breakfast in the morning. And so, 
uh, my grandson does. So uh, I've gotten that generation <laughs> on, on to it again. But we're also drinking a green powder drink. Yeah. And the green powder drink is really cool because it gets you probably seven to nine helpings of vegetables every day. And so if you eat vegetables and, and then take the green powder in addition to it, you're getting like 14, 15 uh, vegetables and fruits a day without all the sugar. That's the other thing, you want to avoid the sugar. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of the strategies that I think, you know, the average person eats two vegetables a day and one of them is uh, potatoes. And potatoes really aren't a very great vegetable. They got some potassium in it and some other things, but it's not one of the greatest vegetables in the world. And a lot of people get their second one when they put ketchup on their potatoes, you know, so they're getting some tomatoes and they're getting some uh, yeah. potatoes and tomatoes. And those are their two vegetables. That two two down. Let's go yeah, seven, seven, seven more, huh? Yeah, they think they're doing pretty good. Yeah. So in my workshops, whether they're workplace or whether they're Vistage, I ask people, how many people think they have a good diet? 90% of them put up their hands. And then at the end of the workshop, I ask them again, how many people think they have a good diet? Nobody puts up their hands. So basically the number one issue facing people in America today is nutritional delusion. Do, they, do you get a lot of chuckles when all the hands stay down? Oh God, they're looking so guilty. You know, they're <laughs> looking at everybody else to see if anybody put up their hand because yeah. nobody's gonna put up their hand after they have one of my workshops. They're terrified, you know. Are, are you, um... Are you? It's it, it will be a year um, this January that I I, I uh, went vegan. You know, I have maybe a, a piece of fish. You know, once once a month, twice a month. But other than that, uh, a buddy of mine, I said, "Man, you look great." He goes, "I went vegan. I went uh, organic." And I said, "Count me in. Let's do it." And I haven't missed the meat. And I was never really a big meat eater, but I you know steak every once in a while uh, chicken, uh, turkey. Um, but I don't feel any inflammation on the inside. That's the one thing. And I don't have a sweet craving. Um, am I missing something in, when it comes to nutrition? Yeah. Vegans are very, uh, it, it can be challenging because mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned you were taking uh, vitamin D. Vitamin D is really hard to get from a vegan diet. And yeah. also some of the key B vitamins are very hard to get because a lot of these B vitamins and iron they're in the meat products. Yeah. And, and so eating, I mean, the Mediterranean diet really says that if you eat poultry and fish, you're going to live longer than somebody that eats red meat uh, in, in, in a diet. So that's why the Mediterranean diet is the, is the healthiest one. But now they've gotten rid of red meat and they're now doing the green Mediterranean yeah. diet. And so you have to take B supplements. You have to take some iron. You have to take some, some vitamin D. And it's the nice thing about this platform that we have, it has 12 different diets in it. So you can specify what diet is that you're following. And then what it does is based on your biochemistry and your health risk assessment and your genes, it tells you exactly what diet you should eat within the wow. vegan diet or this diet that's gonna be healthy for you. And so it makes adjustments based on what your existing biochemistry and your situation is. And that's the beautiful thing. So anybody can eat any diet as long as we know ahead of time what your chemistry is doing in your body. And then it can make adjustments and it can say, eat more fish, take a vitamin D supplement, take a B supplement. It'll tell you exactly what to do to compensate for the things you're not getting from the diet you're eating. And, and so is this a blood test? Is it lab work? Or how, how, how are you? How would I do? Uh, do design the right diet for me, design okay. for me. So in the AI platform, there's four components. And this, is, is this on, on your website? Um, yeah, okay. it's gotta be on there somewhere. Okay. I, mean, uh, I think I think the thing is we, we sell these in the workplace to okay. employers. And okay. I have a number of employers that have bought this and are using it. So is, uh, it, is this also for individuals that are listening if they want to do this? It's for individuals, but you know what? It's, it's really not on the market as an individual thing right now. Okay. We do have some doctors that are using it, so they get it that way through their doctor. Gotcha. But in this case, we have an advanced health risk assessment. And so this is like hundreds of questions, but you start off with 50. Uh -huh. And then if the questions start to show that you're doing something that is a little bit untowards, 
and maybe you've had a little bit too much weight put on or you've done something, then it starts to say, wait a minute, we think we need some drop down questions for you. And so then you'll get the diabetes drop down questions, or you get the heart disease drop down questions. So it's the most advanced health risk assessment that's available. And then at the end, it will say, do you want a blood test? And then you go in and you can get one of our two blood tests. One is uh, 129, one's 199, but these are these advanced biomarkers again. And then the blood, mar the blood test is added in and then your score changes. As soon as you put the blood thing, the, the score changes because it's a score of one to 100. And uh, if your blood work is not in there and you get a score of like 95, I had somebody do that last week. Then they put the blood work in, the score went down to 80 because they had things indicating that, you know, were in their blood that they didn't know from the health risk assessment. Wow. And then for another $129, you can get a genome test. And in, instead of the 23andMe where you get 200, what we call, single nucleotide polymorphisms, uh, SNPs. This one has 400 SNPs in it for the same price as the 23andMe. Then that is thrown in to all the information. Now the computer is saying, okay, we've made about uh, 250,000 calculations now. And then you say, yeah, but there's 40,000 clinical trials here that we want you to look at. And so then, uh, those 40,000 trial, 40, trials are factored in, that takes the calculation up to about a million calculations. So once you do the blood test and, and the blood work and the genome and everything is in there, all that takes about 30 to 40 minutes to put in. Hmm. And then in less than a second, all the calculations are done. Technology. Technology. It, That's it, the artificial intelligence part. So... so Go, go on, sorry. So that's when you not only get the score of one to 100, you get what your 10 existing systems look like. Uh, and so now you get a score for each system. Here's your cardiovascular. Here's your skeletal muscular. Here's your endocrine system. And so it tells you where your challenges are and gives you the specific recommendations so that when you follow the recommendations, then you can not only see your score go up from 40 to 60 to 80 to 85 or 90, you can also see your systems changing and you see what the scores are in the system. So it's very sophisticated. There's like a million recipes on there that you can look at. And so it's really for, you know, we, we the basic price for like 50 employees is $90 a, an employee per year. And so that's cheaper than any other blood test that you're oh, ever going to get. Yeah. You know, and I think I applaud employers um, that are doing stuff like this. It, it, uh, about 12 years ago, because it was right after my father passed, my mom's insurance reached out to her and said, hey, Mrs. Malanka, you know, you've been with us for a while. You, you're healthy. We would like to give you a um, lifetime membership at any of these five gyms and i thought way to think outside the box guys you know let's keep our our uh i guess we, we're patients to the insurance company let's keep the patients healthy our clients healthy so they're not using have you know having to you know have a high cost and i think just it's it, it's smart it's smart it sounds like this is what you're doing as well back to the diet um about a couple months after after uh i changed my diet you know, I, I <laughs> just show you how human beings are about four months prior. Someone said, you got to watch this documentary. And I said, OK, I'll watch it. I'll watch it. And not until two months I, that I had changed my diet. I finally watched this documentary and it was the, the game changers. What are your thoughts about that? It was uh, did you even, did you catch that? I saw parts of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Good, bad and different. It, I mean, it's OK, you know, I, I I try to stay with doctors and yeah. uh, and clinics that I know that I that I that I have worked with in the past. Uh -huh. So when I find somebody that has uh, the science that I'm interested in, and the <clears throat> protocols that I'm interested in, I kind of go with that. And I and I don't go just jumping around and, and take a look at everything. People yeah. ask me for stuff all the time, and I will take a cursory look at something. 
but if it's not really in my bailiwick of things to do, you know this, there's only so many hours in a day. And so you have to concentrate your efforts. And so yeah. unless it's extremely science-based and really goes right into my pathway of interest, I just don't have the time to look at everything. Yeah, and there's a lot out, there's a lot out there. You mentioned uh, DNA and genomes. Um, there are some companies in the cannabis space that um, say get your, your, your markers from uh, 23andMe or, or Ancestry.com, submit them into them, they'll put them into their database and they pop out um, uh, what the best, I guess, type of uh, uh, cannabis uh, and, and formulation is best for you, your individual and your DNA, as well as battling any types of ailments. Um, what are your thoughts of that? Well, sure. I mean, all these things, you know, everybody has, you know, cannabis receptors on their cells. Mm -hmm more in the brain than anywhere else probably. Um, but again, it all depends on what your, what your biochemistry is and what your history is and what your genome is. And so, yeah, there's a lot of variables, but you know, the Israelis have been doing the more, most research on this for the last 15 or 20 years. And so whenever I'm trying to find out whether there's current research on a topic, I try to find one of those scientists from Israel because they usually have a database that's a lot bigger than some of the scientists in North America that have been yeah. messing around with cannabis. Uh, not to say that there aren't some really great scientists doing some great work, but they're usually building on the work of the, of the, of the scientists from Israel. Uh, there are, and I think I read this in one of your articles, 15 to 20,000 peer reviewed articles on the science behind cannabis. Did I read yes, that correctly? That's right. That's right. And, um, you know, so when they say, and I, and I agree with you that Israel's leading the way, Europe's leading the way, China's leading the way, Canada's leading the way, uh, even, even South America. And I don't, it, it, it's disappointing that United States is not at the, it, you know, in the top one, two, three, I don't even think they're the top five when it comes to cannabis. And, uh, you know, it, it, I think they need to change the scheduling to get those because I, I had a patient, a patient, I had a, uh, God, I've talked to so many people, but uh, I don't know if she was a doctor or a scientist, but um, you know, oh no, she was a, a pharmacist. And she said she was doing a paper. She wanted to do a paper on cannabis. And uh, they said, well, there, the, this is, this is not uh, research done here in the United States. You need to do, you know, find something that's, that's done here in the United States. And, you know, that's disappointing because, you know, there's, there's so much information on the benefits of this plant, not to, to take away from your test, but, um, you know, bringing the body back to homeostasis. And that's part of what you, you talk about in, uh, you know, in your, in your numerous writings that you had and authored, but bringing the body back to homeostasis, sleep uh, and diet and nutrition and immune is so important as well. And I think it's tying that in and having that also part of, uh, uh, an arsenal of tools in your tool belt to, to, to stay healthy. And you said there's so much information out there because I find myself, you know, reading and reading and taking a deep dive. And then when someone comes to me, like someone did today, I have Hodgkin's lymphoma. I'm thinking, okay, it's what, what are the studies on cannabis? What are the studies in functional medicine? What are the studies in conventional medicine? And so, you know, I don't know about you, when people come to me, I just feel like, okay, let me get this information. You know, I'm not a doctor, but I'm a health advocate and I, and I, and I want to point people in the right direction. You know, I've shared point people to you. I've shared people to uh, uh, others that I feel are, are on the tops of their, of their, of their um, uh, practice, I should say, and what they're doing. And so uh, do you recommend, I know you're in Florida, you're in Sarasota, Florida, and Florida now is, is, uh, uh, legal can, is, cannabis is legal there. Do you work with a lot of patients that way or are you doing more with the workplace and employers? Well, I, I, I'm doing a, a lot of work in a lot of different areas, but um, uh, to, to explain exactly uh, the, the pathway that I mentioned before is, I, I was interested in cannabis enough to write that article, Yep. but I didn't really get reinterested in it again until I saw a clinical trial that said a, a derivative molecule of cannabis has now been proven to be able to produce more beta cells in the pancreas. 
So one of the problems that probably was facing your wife, which she could not know, was how many, how many beta cells she actually had in her pancreas when she was born. Because you can be born with under 50,000, and this is usually diagnosed as a type one diabetic, um, because if they're there when they're born, but they kind of through the autoimmune system, they, they sort of are destroyed by the time they're five years old, then they do have type one diabetes. Uh -huh. But you can also be born with 200,000. And that's a small number because a person, if, if a person is gonna have a normal functioning uh, uh, pancreas, they need about two and a half million. And so if you have somebody with 200,000 versus somebody with two and a half million, the person with a smaller amount has a 90% greater risk of having pancreatic cancer and diabetes than a person who has two and a half million. They could eat the same diet and one of them would get pancreas by the time they were, or get diabetes by the time they were 20. And the other one wouldn't get it until they were like in their 50s and 60s because they just have more beta cells. So we've been struggling with this whole thing for years now. We know that Gymnenia sylvestri has some activity uh, that helps the, the pancreas to increase the population of the beta cells in the pancreas. But we didn't know until this molecule from the cannabis came along that you could actually begin to multiply and then increase the multiplication of them. The problem is that, that that molecule is such a small component of the cannabis plant, it would take 50 acres to produce one ounce. And so now we're looking for a synthetic version uh, to replicate the molecular structure of this molecule, because we think that it will be much easier to do in the long term, rather than having to plant every other acre of land in the United States with cannabis. But we know this study is a valid study. We know this molecule exists. And so all of my concentration now is trying to find a way to get this particular molecule produced in mass so that we can provide this to people along with diet changes to get them to reverse their diabetes if they have it and to prevent it if they, uh, if they are vulnerable. And so that's my concentration now. I mean, I want to prevent disease. I, I'm really, really tired of, of, of repairing it and replacing. And uh, I mean, I, I still continue to want to do that. But if we know that 90% of cancer is preventable, 90% yeah. of diabetes is preventable, and 90% of Alzheimer's is preventable, then that's what we should be doing. And so that's where I'm putting almost all my energy into prevention. I, 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 you know, my dad was diabetic and it, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a hereditary thing. We, we grew up in, uh, as I mentioned, um, I grew up in, in, in Japan as well as in, in uh, the Philippines. But when we were in Japan, uh, he worked for um, a bank over here. We were transferred over, over, over to Japan. And I didn't know the story till I was older, but uh, he, he had a, uh, another uh, bank colleague that came over and he went to dinner with, uh, with my mom and my dad and they went on sushi. And that evening they all got deathly ill. And my mother was the only one who threw it up. And the rest of my dad's life and this other gentleman's life had the same illness. Their gallbladder burst, their pan they had pancreatitis. Uh, they became a diabetic. And so I saw this and, uh, and he, my dad was a healthy diabetic, if you can be a healthy diabetic. But, um, you know, so when I hear diabetes, when I hear pancreatic cancer, those perk my ears up in, in prevention and reversing. I know you did a study about uh, vitamin D, and I'm a big fan of vitamin D. Um, what's day, day, I do about 10,000 um, uh, IUs. Is that too much? We don't know because you have to get the test. And yeah. so um, until you get the test, it's kind of hard to know. You can't overdose on it. It's kind of hard to do, but yeah. you should be between 50 to 90 nanograms per milliliter. 
Mm -hmm. So that's one of the tests that will be included in the test that you're going to get. Wow. And once you find out, uh, even if you're in the 50 range, uh, it's still not a bad idea to take uh, more until you can test it and get in the 80, 80, 90 range. I mean, my, mine is, mine was in the forties for the longest time. And then I learned about doing my sunshine, uh, you know, 20 minutes with totally. no sunscreen on. And then I started to take five or 10,000 international units a day. And within yeah. six months, I got to like 93. And so I doubled my vitamin D. Uh, and vitamin D is really cool because it controls about 2,000 different genetic expressions in the body for chronic illness. So it's not just about cancer and about the flu, although those are two of the most powerful uses of it. We know that it is the strongest antiviral uh, vitamin D3. In fact, yesterday, there was an article that came out from 120 scientists endorsing vitamin D3 for the COVID virus. And this is un unprecedented. These scientists were for all over America, all over the world from South America and Europe and China and Russia. And all these scientists had decided it was too, it was just too much to, to bear that we've been under this pressure for the last almost a year now of yeah. this virus. Yeah. And as an example, our friend, Dr. Fauci, didn't say anything about vitamin C or vitamin D or the immune system until about a month ago. And then all of a sudden, in an informal interview, which get, then got caught up in some other, somebody else broadcasted, mm -hmm. he said, oh, yeah, I take vitamin C and vitamin D every day. And I thought to myself, well, excuse my language, but when in the hell were you going to tell us? You know, here's the top virologist in the world, has never mentioned the immune system once, has never ever mentioned vitamin C or vitamin D, and yet he takes it every day to improve his immune function. I'm sorry, but that, that border, that's borderline unethical to have that knowledge and not share it. And so the media and the medical community have been, have been collaborating to suppress this information. And actually, I think this is, again, tantamount to malpractice if there are doctors uh, because we know that these and other things are really strong antivirals. And they should have told us that the immune system is the key to this. And that if they uh, don't, we know also that University of North Carolina and Stanford University Medical School both did studies on the, uh, the adult metabolism in the United States and found that 90% of people were metabolistic weak to the to and vulnerable to the coronavirus. That means that there's virtually nobody that has an immune system strong enough to resist this virus. <laughs> and yet they're not talking about this at all. Um, I found those studies, other people can find those studies, but you won't see it on CBS or NBC or ABC. You won't see it on Fox News and you won't see any of the doctors talking about it. And if they were to talk about it, what they'd find out is that vitamin D3 is the number one preventative element in the world against cancer. And it's been used to not only prevent cancer, but to treat cancer. And we now have at least a half a dozen studies that show that when you have levels of vitamin D between 30 and 90 nanograms per milliliter, you reduce the risk of breast cancer by 77% you reduce the risk of prostate cancer by 83%. This is just, we have a cancer epidemic, we now have a flu pandemic, and all the tools that are available to, to help to arrest these diseases and these problems are being ignored because they tell me that the pharmaceutical industry pays for about 70% of all the advertising and all the big media coverages in the United States. So whether it's magazines or newspapers or television or radio, they have their hand in everybody's pocket in advertising and they're the biggest contributor to election campaigns. So to me, the number one thing, if I was president on, December, on January the 20th, I would say, we're gonna stop allowing drug companies to advertise on the media. 
we're the only industrialized country in the world that allows prescription medications to advertise in the media. The only one. There's a lot of money behind that. You, you mentioned vitamin D with cancer and, and immune system. You know, when Crin became ill and talk about you just when you get that diagnosis of being scared and you just, I mean, I consulted with doctors, we consulted with doctors all over the world from Italy to UK to New Zealand to Australia, brought her down to a clinic in Mexico and numerous medical professionals here in America. And one, doc, one medical professional that I worked with um, over in Australia it, it was vitamin D. How much vitamin D? You know, his first thing was get her into a deserted island, uh, get in the water, eat fruits and vegetables, but also, but the minerals in the water. And I said, you know, if she was having a nervous breakdown, I would love to do that. You know, get, don't answer phones, close your, and I said, but I can't do that. It's cancer, pancreatic cancer. We live in California. And then he shared about vitamin D and what he does with all his uh, uh, patients and the vitamin D levels, not from, you know, IVs or droppers, but I, but vitamin D from the sunlight. And what he shared was that, um, you know, heats up the capillaries in the blood, converts to HCL. And if the sodium, potassium, and chloride are also on the higher levels of the healthy body numbers on the scale, it will attack the cancer cells. It was working. It was where even our doctors here were just blown away saying, continue that. I mean, cancer markers started going down. Her pain levels were, were dropping. She was standing up taller. And then that year, was the Napa Valley fire here in California, about an hour north of us. And the smoke was so bad throughout the Bay Area that we couldn't get outside in those 10 days and she declined rapidly. And so I'm a big fan of vitamin D. And I share that, you know, I, I, I do that every day. Um, uh, get outside if you're able to, uh, for both men and women, if you're able to get the sun on your torso, depending on where you live, I don't want to scare any neighbors, but, uh, uh, but it is important. And I was reading one of your articles that you sent over is that vitamin C about, uh, I think it was about 125,000 people in this study showed that they took over 4,000 IUs of vitamin D and the pancreatic cancer rates dropped 86% or something like that. Yeah. I mean, when I read that, you know, my eyes welled up with tears, you know, of course. I mean, I, I, I've learned so much about cancer um, when Crin was in it, but also be prior to that because of her father, but when she was in it and after, um, and like you, I mean, it, you can just keep on going and going and going and going and researching all these different studies. Well, and what works for one person may not work for the other. So I don't want to ever give anybody false hope, but having this arsenal of information out there, you know, it does kind of make you go crazy at times, but a lot of the stuff makes sense. And that, that to me and that to us made sense to us, the vitamin D. It all has great science behind it. And some of the greatest, uh, most prestigious universities and medical centers in the world have been working with it. Uh, MD Anderson works with it. I mean, there's lots of places that are doing studies in this area. Yeah. The, the problem is they don't collaborate as much and they don't share the information as readily and it, it doesn't get into the media as much. But, you know, in, 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 in the last couple of minutes, maybe, well, we can't do all the different tests I yeah. think the principle behind these advanced tests is usually disease is, is diagnosed in what we call the last three stages of cellular deterioration, when cells become dysfunctional, mutated, or diseased. But there are three other stages. The early stages are when cells are stressed, when they're weakened, and when they're challenged. And so I'll give you just a couple of examples of okay. what happens if you don't have the right test because cells get stressed. And when you can see that stress, you can see it with thermography as an example. Thermography is completely different than mammography. Mammography, you need 4 billion cells to see the tumor. And even at that, it's only got a 65% accuracy. But with thermography, you get a 95% accuracy with 200 cells. So they can see these 200 cells and they're heating up. Mm -hmm. And when that heat, that, that represents stress. And so when you see those 200 cells, then you say, okay, uh, we're going to now put you on a detoxification program. We're going to do stress reduction. We're going to do nutrition. Then after three to six months, you do another test. 
those 200 cells are back to normal because they were only stressed. They weren't mutated, they weren't diseased. So another one that, that's pretty much in that same category is the glucomark test, the glycomark test. The glycomark test is the number one test for sugar. They use the A1C, it's only a 90, it's only a 90 day average. They use the total glucose and it's just, it's a fasting test and it doesn't mean anything because the majority of your sugar challenges happen two hours after you eat. Hmm. And so what we've got is people eat three times a day, they're diabetic for six to eight hours every day. But when they fast and they go get their blood work, then they're normal again. And so this glycomark test actually factors in what happens after you eat. And so, so you don't need to basically, you don't have to take the test first thing in the morning if you go down no, to the lab. You take it any time. Okay. And in fact, when women are pregnant yeah. and, they, and they get what they call the glucose challenge test, they actually give them 75 grams of sugar, of wow. glucose. And so then they watch them over three hours and they see how high your insulin and your glucose goes up. And then they see how quickly it comes down. And so if you can come back to normal within two and a half hours, then all your, all your insulin receptors on your cells are working and your pancreas is working. So the glycomark test is kind of similar to that. It can catch something happening on your insulin receptors or your pancreas five to seven years before the A1C test. So now we have validation that the things that we talked about before about the, um, the, the, the 5,000 markers in the body, mm -hmm. uh, enzymes and the 5,000 other biomarkers, we now know that we can validate that the, those tests by comparing it to other tests. A and one other that I'll give you is one called the Galactin-3 test. And Galactin-3 is also looking at cellular changes. So it's looking at how fibroids develop in your body. And so if you see that you've got this activity going on in this galactin-3 test, it's kind of an indicator that you're moving towards either cancer or heart disease. And so then if you, if you eat a better diet and you take a product called modified citrus pectin and you consume that for three to six months, all of a sudden your galactin-3 levels go from 17 and a half down to 13. I know because that's what mine did. And so this, this galactin-3 is one of the most, this modified citrus pectin is one of the most amazing treatments for all cancers. Because if you can get that in your body soon enough, then you're gonna get your galactin-3 levels down. You're gonna get a lot of your other cancer markers down. In men with their PSAs, they were able to get their PSAs reduced in 12 months by 70%. Well, so the, the pectin-3 that I uh, see that I'm talking about is in powder form. Are you, is it, is it in the, an IV? Is it a pill? Well, what? no, it, you, but see, that's the, that's the interesting thing. Yeah, it can be an IV uh -huh. uh, and it can be, a, and, and it can be a powder and it can be a chewable tablet. But, but this goes back to the, to some of the things that Dr. Uh, Thomas is doing in Mount Dora. We also know that inflammation, uh, cancer is an inflammation disease. And so we now know that this new supplement called specialized pro-resolving mediators mm -hmm. are the most powerful anti-inflammatory bar none, prescription or non-prescription, because it resolves stage one and stage two of inflammation. Stage one is you address the inflammation and you push it back and, and it's, in, it's in a better state. You can do that with curcumin or a lot of anti-inflammatories. But with stage two, you actually resolve the pain and the inflammation and get the cell to go back to reverting to normal. Once we learned that, then the oncologist like Dr. Thomas said, wait a minute, maybe we can look at these, what we call resolvins that are from fish oil mm -hmm. And, he, and they found there were six of them. And in, in cancer, they call them D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6. And now he uses intravenous resolvents in his cancer treatments. 
And so when I say that he's doing state-of-the-art cancer treatment, he's got curcumin intravenously, he's wow. got modified citrus pectin, he's got the resolvins. So these things are bypassing the digestive system and getting right into the cells of the body. And this is, there's a whole series of tests that I have that, that, do, that do this. I even have a test that measures uh, how much DNA damage has been done in your body, accumulate wow. over the last, of your whole life. It's called the 8-O-H-G-D test. And it's one of the only tests, it's a urine test that can actually measure the accumulative DNA damage being done to your cells. Then you do your detoxifications, you do your treatments. Guess what? You're going to have a reduced challenge in the 8-O-H-G-D test. So we can actually see through galactin-3, through C-reactive protein, through the glycomark, we can actually see patients improving biochemically. Is this, are all these products, is this something that you can get uh, over the counter? Do you need, a, do you need a, a prescription from a doctor? I mean, no. what, what? All these things, SPM, C-reactive pro, uh, rather uh, modified citrus pectin, they're all on my website. Okay. And okay. so most of them are there uh, to be purchased. And, you know, I say, you, you, I don't have a lock on this. You can buy them anywhere. Yeah. I just happen to make sure I have the most highest, the highest quality products and I have them at the best prices. And so you can get your test here and then you can get your supplements and you can go and actually measure in three to six months. Am I improving? And so Dr. Thomas has a lot of other cancer marker tests that I don't have. Uh, but I have the basic ones that are included in this protocol. And so I have this protocol with these 20 different tests in them that will actually identify whether you have the beginnings of the cellular changes that are going to point you in the direction of cancer down the road. And so we're looking at your vitamin C levels. We're looking at your CoQ10 levels. We're looking at homocysteine. We're looking at a lot of different things that are going to give us an idea that something is happening in your cells that's moving your cells towards cancer. Now, I have the same thing for Alzheimer's. I was going to ask you, we, we've talked about uh, cancer and diabetes, and I didn't know if, if, because the other killers are heart disease as well as, as, as brain issues, and, right. and Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia all fall yeah. in that. Um, are you finding success with that? Yes, absolutely. I have a whole program on my site called the Brain Health Program uh -huh. that has a lot of assessment tools on there. And so that you can find out, are you eating the right diet? Are you taking the right supplements? And, and then it gives you a sort of a personalized program. In fact, I developed this three or four years before I got into the artificial intelligence thing. Uh -huh. And so, yes, I mean, almost every disease now, every chronic illness, we have a protocol for it. And, and so we know that this six stages of cellular deterioration actually is very accurate, extremely accurate. And we base all of our protocols on finding these illnesses in those first three stages. And if we can do that, this is when we can get the 90% prevention rate. Is um, like Alzheimer's, is it also uh, a treatment or is it a prevention? Because it sounds like the other stuff is prevention. Well, you know, the, some people have done amazing work on this. Uh, David Perlmutter was doing the initial work uh, 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then about six years ago, uh, Dale Bredesen wrote uh, had a, a, an article that he did on a, a small clinical trial where he had 10 Alzheimer's patients. And uh, he, he did something very unique because every other study that had been done on an Alzheimer's uh, vaccine or, or medicine had only measured one thing. And what Dr. Bredesen found out was there are 38 markers that actually indicate that something's happening moving towards Alzheimer's. And so he tried to develop a protocol that actually addressed all 38 of those markers. He did that so effectively that within three months, 90% of those people were now testing normal again, mm -hmm. as opposed to being Alzheimer's and, and dementia challenge. When I say normal, this means within a range with the symptoms actually uh, uh, being addressed adequately enough to go back to a normal job uh, opportunities or other things. 
and the only one person didn't respond. And this was the person with the most advanced Alzheimer's. And now he's trained 500 or 1,000 doctors around the country in his protocol. And his book, The End of Alzheimer's, is absolutely the, the most amazing book that's ever been written on Alzheimer's. And I can tell you that because every other study that has ever been done on a treatment for Alzheimer's had a 99.6 failure rate because they only tested one thing. So the Cleveland Clinic looked at all those studies and, and could not find one that had an adequate solution because they're, only, they're testing for one thing. No chronic disease can be treated with just one thing. 99% uh, of the time, it needs multiplicity of things. So monotherapies don't work. Mm -hmm. Multiple therapies do work. That's okay. the bottom line. You, you mentioned, uh, and I, I want to be uh, courteous of your time as well. You mentioned um, a Dr. Thompson. Um, uh, you, was it Dr. Thompson, you said? Thomas. Thomas, excuse me. And is he, is he an MD? Is he an oncologist? He's, an o, he's, a, he's a DO with a master's yeah. of science. So all, the, all the people who endorsed my, my, my COVID long hauler thing either have a PhD, either have a, a DO with a master of science or an MD with a, a, with a master's of health or an MD with a master's of science. And so these three that endorsed my, uh, my COVID long hauler protocol are three of the most preeminent doctors and scientists in the, in the country. And so that's why I feel so honored to have them endorsing my COVID long hauler protocol, because we've been, we've been treating people for months with COVID and we've never had any person go to the hospital. We have never any person die. And the long haulers, some of them have up to three, five months of being a long hauler with prolonged symptoms. And we've been hundred percent effective with every one of them. So I'm not saying we have hundred percent cure, I yeah. can't say that about COVID because it's a very sensitive topic, but all I know is the protocol that I've been using has been highly effective with people that either didn't have it and wanted to prevent it, had it and wanted to treat it, or had it in the long haul and wanted to treat it. We've treated all three types with the same kind of basic protocols. And well, that's, that's another show. What, what is your definition of a long hauler? I know you well, that's somebody that has, uh, that this has, gone past the point where they're testing positive for the virus. They're now testing negative, but they still have brain fog. They still have headaches. They still have throat problems. They still can't breathe properly. So they're, they're having continual uh, uh, damage in the cell. Yeah. So the virus keeps on performing this damage in about six of the key organs in the body and without being tested, without testing positive. And so this is the miraculous thing about this virus. Well, there's so many different uh, symptoms. You know, I think I had it when I was overseas but past in January. I was over in Asia um, and um, flying over there on January 1st, people were talking about the China flu, the China virus. And while I was yeah, over there, the yeah. China flu, the China virus, and you're hearing it making its way through. Um, I remember one day I was, I grew up over there. So we had a, uh, a school reunion. There were about 1600 alumni that showed up in the class of 1950, the class of 2020. Um, and it was just, what an event that was. Our school had been open for a hundred years, 1920, wow. 2020. So it was, wow. you know, it was, some of these guys I hadn't seen since I was a teenager. And so, but we just picked up right where we left off, but a lot of us, jump off, John, I, I got another uh, thing that I got to join in two minutes. No problem. We'll take, tell you what. So love to get you on back on the show talking about COVID if you go for that as well. Okay. Um, I would love, uh, uh, and I was always told if you don't ask, the answer is always no, but I'd love to take, try your test um, to see where my health is yeah. and, and, um, and share the results. Is that something that we can work yeah. offline? Absolutely. Let's do it. Okay. So um, I'll let you get to your next next show. And I appreciate Dr. Benz for coming on and um, uh, so much information. I mean, I know that you and I could be on there for another, I mean, we've had long telephone calls like this too. So um, how can people find you? DrCharlesBenz.com, DrCharlesBenz.com. And, and I'll put that information on there and we'll talk offline and how I can get that test and we'll get you back on. I'll read my results. Thank you so much, John. I really appreciate the opportunity. Yes.
bless you and your wife and uh, thanks for your time and we'll see you soon. Everybody hope you enjoyed that. John Malanke, United Patient Group, be informed, be well. And we'll see you again, Dr. Benz, and we'll see you as well. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hi, John Malanke here with United Patients Group. I hope you've enjoyed our videos. Please click like as well as subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Also, follow us on Twitter at UPatients Group and on Facebook at United Patients Group, as well as for our podcast. Please click the link in the description below. We'll see you there. Bye-bye.